too foolish. You know, and, and like you're saying, you know, without just keeping those backup systems there so you, you're not completely vulnerable, but we are now. That's right. Uh, I mean, simply. Cooling systems for nuclear power plants is another thing I've been thinking about. Are they yeah. primarily electricity right. you know, driven? What what happens there? You know, how long can yeah, you run I think these on they, generators? I think they have backup, exactly. I think they have backup. But I see that points up a whole other area. I think that we've all realized now since March that you know, natural disasters are one thing, but when you have a natural disaster that takes takes out a nuclear power plant, then you got a real serious problem that yeah. goes on for thousands and thousands of years, and uh, and that bring you know that's another whole foolish enterprise that we have to deal with now. But I think that's you know, in my research over the last eight years, um, what I realized was that we worry a lot about natural disasters, but the truth is. They do not do that much damage, nor do they kill that many people. Um, you know, I don't care, even the 9.0 earthquakes. Let's face it, I mean, it, it's, I don't mean to sound cold or something, but 20,000 people or even 200,000 versus the 7 billion that are on the planet mm -hmm. now. Yeah. It's not a large number at all. Right. It's, we're, not, we're not really threatened as a, as a species by uh, just straight up natural disasters, but when you couple them with nuclear, then you're talking something different. I mean, if we have a series of earthquakes that, you know, damage other, which we just saw. I mean, this earthquake was moderate. It just hit uh, in the eastern United States. Yeah. Right. And there are. That's where most of our nuclear reactors are. Had that been a seven or a seven point five, you'd have seen some very serious damage, that's and it right. would have been at nuclear power plants as well. And that can happen any time. It surprised everybody back there, but. Hey, you know, who said there were earthquakes? Yeah, well, exactly. It's 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 really it's really scary when you begin thinking about it and how vulnerable our, our systems are, and, and and just all of this is based on a misconception that we believe that uh, some of these areas won't be struck, you know, by by earthquakes. But um, as you said, well, earthquakes are fairly local. Of course, we can have a series of them. We can have them uh, coming in different right. areas at different times, but. All of this, all of these things are, are, are coupled together, as you said. Maybe we can begin to tie in the idea of, of solar activity with a connection to maybe earthquakes, volcanic activity, and into this picture, of course, we have the concept of the you know electric universe as well. And, and this begs the question of, of what the comets then are, are are adding to all of this as well. So tell us a bit about that, Will. Okay. Well, I think what we haven't we've kind of looked at the universe as you know, the, the way the geologists used to look at geology, you know, but it, it, it was pretty stable and, you know, now we know, no, it's not, it's very dynamic. You know, the planet is changing all the time, uh, the, the, the continents are drifting. Um, you know, we've got earthquakes that are happening that, that exhibit it. And I think what people have to, re you know, I'm at the age where I still remember um, that earthquakes weren't very commonplace. Volcanoes happen very seldom. And now, ever since the 60s, we have been in a, in a situation where they're, they're becoming very commonplace. Um, just increasingly up until this decade, and it's still happening. Um, you know, and the, the tornadoes that we had uh, in April were just incredible. I mean, 300 tornadoes in a day? <laughs> That's phenomenal. It's yeah. unbelievable, you yeah. know. Um, and they did tr tremendous amount of damage. Uh, three three hundred mile per hour winds are unimaginable. Uh, you know, it just completely tore things up. So we're having more intensity from different kinds of storms, from you know natural events, um, and and also higher level of frequency of all of these things, which I pointed out in my article in 2004 when scientists weren't really you know they kept uh, rejecting the idea and saying no 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 everything's about the same. No, it's not the same. <laughs> You know, it's been changing, and everybody knows it. You know, so why why are you uh, making this claim? Well, they can fudge, you can fudge around with statistics, you know. But if you take the like with earthquakes, 6.0 and above, forget about the ones below 6.0. Um, there's been a huge staggering increase in the really severe earthquakes. Okay, we know. You know, the first nine point above 9.0 happened in 1960. And then since then, we've had four or five more, and that's, that's, that level of earthquake is, 
just uh, it's hard to contemplate. Mm. You know, if you get nine, 9.5, it's chilly in 1960, and the tsunami went across, you know, completely across the Pacific Ocean and did a lot of damage. But so we, you know, we know we're in, in some kind of different era, um, and hopefully people are starting to wrap their minds around it. But I, I don't know. Um, I must admit, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pessimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, governments tend to react very slowly. They tend to accept new things very slowly. Scientists more often have been, some of them have been warning. You know, some of them have more been, look, you know, we're about due for a big earthquake, uh, you know, along the California coast and that sort of thing. Um, but by and large, I guess most people think, well, what can I do about it anyway? You know? Right. Um, these things are just going to happen. Um, but in terms of the, the rise, of, there's a correlation between sunspot cycle and increased uh, natural disasters, and it, it just it makes sense. You know, I mean, the sun, that's, you know, the, the source of all energy on the planet, so it's always affecting the planet, and, and when it intensifies, it seems to get things moving around. So you, uh, and we had, uh, you probably noticed, you know, we had quite a number of volcanoes up through June. Right, this yeah. year, just this year. We had a lot of volcanoes. Now the activity subsided here for a couple of months. Um, and earthquakes have gotten less, although they've still been there. And uh, the recent one uh, on the East Coast here yesterday in the United States, um, that got everybody's attention. Yeah, there was one in um, Colorado, too, I think, in, on about the same that's right. magnitude. I, yeah. That's right, on the same day. So. Um, we're seeing things in a different pattern, you know. It's kind of sh- the Earth is kind of showing us. Well, don't just think about California. You know, earthquake can happen in the Midwest, uh, in the East. Uh, I don't think you see them in Scandinavia. Very, very seldom uh, we get yeah. activity here. There is some, but but very, very, very rarely. And the question is, of course, is even if this activity might stretch up to these kinds of places now as well, uh, will we might get a if you say if there's an increase in the overall energy output, if you will, of the of the sun, that's going to affect right. all the different systems here on Earth, and we might get a, a, a shifting of these uh, the earthquake locations, basically. It's possible, you know. That's that's possible. I just leave it open. But uh, historically, I don't think there's been a lot of activity in in northern Europe. No. Um, in southern Europe, yeah. In Italy, um, in particular, but. Um, and China seems, and we know Japan, and I'm really concerned about Japan, and, and kind of disappointed, really. Um, how, they dealt, the, how they dealt with the situation over there, yeah. Well, the, the fact that they, they built so many nuclear reactors on a, on a very um, seismically vulnerable island, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really kind of staggers the mind, and I find it very frustrating because I know I've been to Japan. I know a lot of Japanese people, and they're very intelligent, hardworking, and so on. And but that they let that happen. I mean, they have 55 nuclear reactors in there. I mean, the United States only has 102 or so in the whole country, and Japan's you know about the size of California. So <laughs> it gives you an idea of what wow. they've done. I mean, yeah. they have really made themselves. I mean, if if another uh, and they've had so many large earthquakes since March, above six, I mean, incredible number, and any of those, you know, and they've been happening in the same area, and, you know, we could get another hit that would take Fukushima uh, and make it even worse. So, you know, we, we're getting all of these uh, these wake-up calls and alarms, but I don't know, people just seem to be, want to stick their heads in the sand or stay asleep, yep, yep. Um, and I, I guess it's just going to take, you know, you know, much much larger uh, disasters. Um, but y- you you know, the world saw what happened here when uh, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. It, it, you you think the, the government would have been prepared, but they weren't at all. No. You know, they weren't prepared at all to deal with it. So if it was much larger, I mean, all of the you know the first responders, they would be so stressed and stretched so thin so quickly that you know. It would just be uh, chaos. Yeah, and that that concerns me. It it, it does uh, absolutely will, and and obviously there's a there is a sinister factor 
to add in to all of this. We don't necessarily have to talk about you know the details of that here today since we have so much else we want to talk about, but I just want to throw it out there. In the mix, we have the possibility of human weather manipulation to add into this pile. We have the possibility of, of an elite force of the planet to want to take the opportunity as increased uh, you know, cataclysmic events happen on the planet to kind of yeah. portray this as, as simply them having a, a bad preparation uh, effort when, when this actually is about, uh, from their point of view, potentially uh, decrease the numbers on the planet and kind of jump on that bandwagon. Uh, so it's, it's yeah, there's, difficult. Yeah, there's definitely, uh, you know, forces within the U.S. government uh, that, that want to see a, a de decrease of the human population. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think, you know, they may not actively try to do anything, but uh, they accept it and, and probably would just let people perish, you know, um, which is what did happen in New Orleans. And if you really look at New Orleans even, it was mostly the poor people because they're always in the lowlands. It was mostly the poor people in New Orleans that got uh, killed or had to leave the city. And, you know, they're not doing anything to rebuild that sector. So they basically got rid of... Uh, you know, a part of the demographics of the city. Yeah. Um, and we could see it on just a much larger scale. Just a much larger scale. And those things, of course, I mean, they're disturbing. But we've seen, you know, equally uh, nasty things go on in human history. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, from that perspective, nothing new. This is uh, just an extension of human nature or, or whatever it is that is, you know, behind these some of these ideas. But let's move on a little bit, Will, and, and talk about yeah. the Electric Universe idea and tie in the comets as well. The Electric Universe is, a, is an important concept to have in mind here when we're talking about incoming comets that we do have now in terms of Elenin, but there is one, two, three more, I think, as well. So let's run through these. Uh, That's right. Okay. Um... The electric universe is pretty simple. That you know, the sun. Yes, we know it's uh, it's based on nuclear fusion, so we can call it you know kind of a nuclear reactor on the one hand. But then, what what does it produce? You know, what are the effects of that? Well, it, it produces uh, electromagnetism, it X-rays, different kind of particles that are you know being radiated out from the sun in all directions. And of course, it, it, it's constantly all of these things are are bathing the Earth all the time, and and we would be incinerated in a heartbeat if it weren't for our magnetosphere. You know, that protects us from the solar wind and from all these particles. So if we damage that, um, if there were a hole in it or anything, that would be another area where it would be extremely vulnerable. Um, so what we're talking about is, if we look at the solar system, we know that, you know, the planets are on a plane, right? Yep. They're on a plane. They're all orbiting on a plane. Um, now, when a comet comes in and crosses that plane, we could call it a, you know, a gravity trench or think of like a groove in a record or whatever. Um, you know, because it keeps, you know, a planet just keeps circling in that, in that same groove. Um, and it, the, the sun has generated electromagnetism and the planets are interacting with that. And when you have a, a comet is a charged body, the, the, um, the asteroids aren't. They're just rocks floating around. But a comet is charged. It goes way out into cold space. And slowly, it slows down. And then as it comes in closer to the, you know, in its orbit to the sun, it speeds up. And then it's, as it gets closer, you know, to its closest point, there's there's an interaction going 